If you do this, you can break out of the mental prison that you're currently living in and actually achieve the thing that you want to achieve. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my thought process and kind of the systematic way that I approach breaking out of the prison, right? The belief prison, the thought prison, the paradigm prison that keeps us stuck and not achieving the goals we want in any area of our life, right? We have to remember that it's not obviously not a physical prison. It's a thought prison. It's a belief prison. Like the bars are beliefs, right? But they, make no mistake about it. They might as well be hardened steel. Because as you and I know, we can't get past those, the, the prison bars, the belief bars that block us in, right? You could also equate this to like a, an invisible you know, maybe maybe there's an electronic or electric fence type thing where the fence is buried, and if you cross a certain barrier, that there's a, a an impulse that doesn't feel right to you. It won't allow you to cross. I just want to make sure that I'm painting a picture of what we're up against, so that when I talk about how to get out of it, it's really clear. So it's an invisible barrier. It's it's something that holds us back from completing something. It could be a task. It could be a project. It could be from doing something, right? From experiencing something, from creating something, from saying something. This is a huge one, right? Since I'm in the talk game, podcasts and content and courses, etc., I know how how powerful that belief prison can be to squash the things that I want to say. Even before this video, the thought came through my mind, hey Mark, are you really qualified? to talk about this. I mean, this is, in my opinion, high level stuff, right? When you're talking about invisible prisons, yeah, prisons of the mind, that's pretty pretty high level stuff. And actually where I believe a lot of the goodness comes from when we can make the massive changes, right? So I had this thought in my mind, are you qualified to be talking about this? Have you done enough? Are you enough? Have you achieved enough to, to enter the conversation of this? So I had to use these same principles on my thought process right then. So see, and I'll talk about this in a moment, where we always have to escape new prisons. Just because you get out of one prison in one area of your life doesn't mean you, you don't have an opportunity to escape many prisons in other areas of your life. Like I believe in every area of our life are many mental prisons that keep us stuck achieving less than in that area right? Say finances, say relationships, health and wellness. There, there are these mental prisons in each of those areas. And then there's, there's a hierarchy of mental prisons, right? We break out of one, we go into a new one. We have a little more freedom. Maybe that prison's a little wider, a little bigger, maybe more amenities, but make no mistake, it's still a prison. It's a prison to infinite spiritual beings enjoying a human experience who have taken on consciousness of maybe scarcity, lack, inability, ineffectiveness. Maybe maybe you call yourself disorganized. Maybe you think that you're not worthy, right? Self-worth is a huge issue. I know that I struggle with that, right? And I'm constantly breaking out of that prison so that I can go up in my experience, right? So each prison is consecutively bigger, more amenities, but make no mistake, it's still a prison because it, as an infinite, expansive human being, that's why we feel, that's why we feel stuck. That's why we get, we, we feel bad when we're not making progress in life, right? It's just like a dog, right? I'm not a dog owner, but I know dog owners and I know dog owners who are in tune with their dog. They know their dog needs a purpose. The dog didn't just come here to lazy around. You didn't just come here to lazy around. That's why you feel bad when you're not expanding and you're not growing. And so these prisons are consecutively bigger and nicer and you could stop at any point in time, right? You could stop breaking out of the prison and be just fine. But you don't ultimately want to because then you become stagnant. And remember in the game of life, you're either growing and expanding and living or you're shrinking and contracting and dying right? There's no, there's a razor thin middle, but there's only one way or the other, right? 
Just saying. So, these mental prisons exist. We live in them all the time. We don't even know they're there. That's why I call them invisible prisons. But they keep us from achieving something we want to achieve, and they hold, they hold us back. I'm going to give you an example here, and then we're going to talk about some of the other ways that I think about this. So, quickly, an example that the, the, the most poignant example in my recent experience, and this happened way back in 2015, was when I was writing my book or, or trying to finish my book, Just Be It, The Secret to Having What You Want in Life. And I couldn't finish it. It was like I was bumping up against an invisible barrier that kept holding me back, right? And I couldn't finish it. And finally, I had a straight up come to Jesus meeting. And I was, you know, talking out loud to myself. And I was like, Mark, what's the deal? Why can't you finish it? Just get it done. What is holding you back? And instantly, up into my conscious level of awareness came an idea. And the idea was, you're not an authority. You're not an authority on this subject. Incidentally, I want to just tell you the subject of that book is how to be, how to be right? We are dynamic beings and we can change what we are at any given point in time by changing our thoughts, beliefs, and the things we accept to be true about ourselves. It's writing yourself a new story. We can do that. A lot of people don't do that, again, because they don't know they're in a prison. Everything, it, they've been in that prison for so long, they don't know they're there anymore. They don't know they have the key right here, and the key is changing your thought process. So that's what that book is about, how to, how to, become, how to become the person you need to be in order to magnetize or attract the experiences you want to have in life or create them. I use attract and create synonymously. So that's what that book was about, but I couldn't finish it. Thought came into my mind, you're not an authority on the subject. Almost instantaneously on the heels of that thought came another thought. And that was, Mark, if you've been studying this for 15 to 20 years, if you're not an authority, then who is? The thought instantly vanished. It disappeared. Because when that thought was in the light of awareness and I shine truth on it, it disintegrates and it goes away. It cannot, it cannot stay in the light of awareness and be in existence. When I told that thought, because my conscious mind knows that if someone studied something for 15 to 20 years, they're a freaking expert. And when I pointed that, that light of awareness on that false belief that was holding me back, it dissolved. And guess what? The book was finished in about one to two weeks and it's done. It's up on Amazon. You can go check it out. There's a bunch of bonus content in there. My point is this. All you have to do is bring that thought or call that thought up to your conscious level of awareness. It's below your conscious level of awareness, obviously, or you would address it just like I addressed it. Remind, remember, that thought process took all of about 30 seconds or maybe a minute at the most. But it had been holding me back, not only from writing that book for, you know, finishing the book for months, but also from in, in other areas of my life too, right? Not thinking I was good enough, not thinking I'm ready, not thinking I have enough information or enough knowledge or enough experience, or that my life isn't going well enough to talk about life with you. It's baloney. All of it is baloney. It's made up constructs. If you've lived one day of life, if a baby could talk, that baby should be teaching what it's like to live one year of life. Excuse me, maybe not teaching is the proper word. Expressing, sharing their experience. That's all I'm doing here, is sharing my experience with you. Hopefully it benefits you in some way. By the way, if it does, please leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. But hopefully it benefits you in some way. And then we all level up our experience as human beings, collectively. That's all I'm about, right? We all want better experiences. And the only way to do that is by sharing knowledge, right? So you, you ask yourself, is this really true, right? Once it comes to your conscious level awareness, let me double back here and talk about how to bring it to the conscious level awareness because I think that's key and I sometimes get hung up there. The simplest, most obvious way is to simply ask like I did. I didn't go under hypnosis. I didn't recite. I wasn't in some deep meditative state. I just got done working and I, I was just pissed. I was angry about being stuck. And I, I spoke it out into the universe. What is wrong? Why are, you, why are you being held back? What is holding you back 
Let's get it done. Like me talking to me. In the game of life, it's us versus us. There's no one else on the playing field. All these other characters on the playing field, they're just, uh, you see the movie Free Guy? They're just extras. They, they're just there for, for, for the enrichment of our experience. It's us against us. It's you against you. That's all it is. And so I asked for it. If you have trouble bringing that to conscious level of awareness, here's some tips. Before you go to bed, you could state the question, why, why am I unable to finish this? Why can't I finish this? What's holding me back? What's stopping you from being, doing, or having what you want to do? What's stopping you? And write down a couple of ideas that come into your mind, right? This is going to start that subconscious engine running. Because remember, as, as spiritual beings having a human, human experience, it's our God-given gift to ask for what we want. And sometimes you got to say it verbally, and sometimes you got to say it vibrationally. All the time you got to say it vibrationally. But you got to say it verbally so it can be called forth. So write down a couple of pro proposed ideas that, that may be holding you back in this area, that may be confining you in this prison, invisible prison, that keeps you from getting where you, what you want, right? Because the wall will not let you, that belief wall will not let you get past that. So write down a couple of ideas. You know, in, in my particular case, uh, it could be maybe what one could be, I'm not a very good writer. Mind you, that wasn't the thing that was holding me back, but it, but it could be, and that has been fa a false belief in my experience as I've written you know five books at this point in time, and I've I've said you know you you didn't study English, you're not a very good you know orator per se or writer, which all these things I don't believe now, but I did at one point in time. Um, why why are you going to write a book? Like you should write a book because that's one thing. The other thing could be. You know, maybe you don't have the proper equipment or you think you need certain things to write a book. And then you got to find reasons or evidence of other people writing books that didn't have that equipment, right? Just like you. Like one of my, one of the things that I think about all the time, and his, his name is Ryan Blair. He's an entrepreneur type character. Um, I forget the uh, book he wrote in the uh, businesses that are in, but he's in that arena, B-L-A-I-R, I believe. You can look him up. But I remember one thing that he said is, he writes all of his books, or he wrote his book on his phone. I mean, duh, right? You don't even need a laptop. You don't even need anything else. If you want to take it to the next level, you could speak your books, right? Using a voice-to-text kind of thing. So there's really, there are less excuses nowadays to do what you want to do than there used to be, right? Used to be, you know, you didn't have that option. It's easier to create nowadays than it ever has been, and so the prisons that, that hold you back are going to be easier to escape from, right? It's easier to create. So if that's the only, do those things only if you have trouble calling up that idea. Once the idea comes up, probably going to happen automatically. Because remember, your conscious mind wants to succeed. You've already set the goal. And you said, I'm going to finish this book by Tuesday, or I'm going to finish this book by tomorrow. You've already set the goal, so your conscious mind already knows that's what you're doing, right? So it's going to help you do that. So you bring that idea up to the conscious level of awareness, instantaneously, boom, it's done, right? Instantaneously. So once the idea comes up to your conscious level of awareness and you can actually see it, right? Where below you couldn't see it. If, you don't, if you're not aware of something or if you can't see something, then you can't fix it, right? So it brings up to your conscious level of awareness, and then you can use your rational mind to address it, right? And you're going to want to look for evidence to the contrary, right? Whatever that belief is that's holding you back, you're going to want to look back in your past experience for evidence that makes that belief false. And I guarantee you're going to find something. See, as we live our lives and as we have this full, rich experience, Let's just hypothetically say you think you're a loser right now. Like you think you're a straight up loser. I guarantee you in your life experience, however many years you've lived, there have been times when you've been a freaking hero and you've been a winner. I guarantee you. The propensity that human beings have is to 
gravitate towards those times when we sucked. And why, why ever this is, right? You know, whether we are more focused on failure, whether we're taught, you know, I don't know. You can go down the rabbit holes, right? However, you, whatever you want to believe that is, it's a real thing. <clears throat> it's definitely a real thing. It's like sometimes I talk about this general negativity that exists in the world, a general resonance of negativity. And you could be, you could be, you know, the most optimistic person in the world, but there is no question that there is resistance here in the physical world, that there is a level of negativity here in the real world, right? That we're, that we're at a certain place on the continuum, right? We can always go up, we can always go down, but let's just be honest. The mind tends to go that way, right? We've got to retrain our mind, refocus on all the times that you were a winner, on all the times that went right, and then you've got to put your, your attention on that. This is the whole idea behind Focus and Flow, Products and Apparel for Conscious Creators, to remind you that what you focus on expands, and what you think about, you bring about. This is what many people have talked about, right? So you're going to find evidence of you being a winner, and it's going to dissolve the fact that you're a loser. Then you're just going to remember it every day. Remember, we have to practice this every day, just like we have to, you know, renew our body with food and exercise and, you know, renew our, you know, breathing in air all the time, right? It's not like you breathe in once and you're done. I believe we have to renew who we are every single day to fortify that right? To fortify ourselves. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm a winner. And here's why. I won this and I won this and I won this. So I'm a winner. I'm not going to focus on the times that I lost. Dennis Waitley talks about this as professional golfers, right? They golf and they hit the ball. And if that ball doesn't go where they want it to go, instantly they're retraining their mind and they see it where they want to go because they don't want that to impress their mind. You don't want failures and mistakes to impress your mind, right? Always look for that evidence to be, look for evidence that supports you being the person who can create what you want to create. And then it'll just grow and grow and grow. So that's the process. Step one is to understand you're in a prison of some sort. And the reason you know that is because you don't have everything you want yet, right? You know that if you weren't being held back by a belief or a false idea, you would have that thing you want. Step two is to ask what it is. What's holding you back? What belief that, what belief your prison is built out of, right? Step three is to look at that when that idea comes to you and you, and it raises up to your level of awareness. You're going to look at that statement about yourself and you're going to say, is that really true? This is when the, the work of Byron Katie comes into play too, where she's like, helps her, um, helps her clients under, ask that question. Like, is it true? Do you honestly, can you honestly say 100% that that is true? And again, when you can't, and I know you can't because no one can say anything 100%. I would go off on a tangent now about our current administration over the last two years, but I'm not going to, you know where I'm going to go. No human being can say anything is 100% true. No one. Because, like I talked about in my video talking about Brene Brown, going off on tangents here, but it's important, Every, everyone's spewing misinformation to a degree. No one can be 100% certain. If any human being or any leader says they're 100% certain about something, you should run as fast as you can in the other direction. And you don't look back. My point being, you're always going to find something that's going to let you in and it's going to start to disintegrate that false belief that's holding you back. That's the process. That's what I do. That's what I use. I'm going to be talking uh, more about this in the future because I think it's super critical. So, before I let you go, I want to invite you to check out my courses. They're all about this kind of stuff. Simple, fun, and effective. I boil all this stuff down so that all you need to do is fill in the blanks, right? And follow the processes, and you're going to have a better experience, right? Because we know, 
when we change, our experiences change. When we change the way we're looking at the world, we're looking at ourselves, the way we're feeling, we're going to have a better experience. Magical, serendipitous things are going to happen to us, right, that we cannot explain. And you know what? It's probably going to freak you out. It probably has freaked you out in the past when that happens. It freaks me out, but that's what we came here to do. We're magical beings in this physical world, and we have the whole universe's attention focused on us, showering us with love and good fortune and opportunities and people and blessings, and we're blocking a lot of it because of our beliefs. Don't block your beliefs. Don't block them. gmarkphillips.com slash courses. There's a number of courses there. If you're just starting out, I recommend the Focus and Flow Journaling Practice. Right now it's in beta mode, which is you and I on a one-on-one -on -one recorded Zoom call. You'll get a PDF. I'll explain the practice to you. You can start right away that day. It takes about, you know, all of five minutes to do step one. Step two is a little more involved, but we can talk about that then. But I would start there if you haven't started with my courses. Because again, tool they're, they're all tools for you to help you create what you want. Thanks very much for watching this video. Until next time, I wish you all the best, health, wealth, and success. Bye-bye.